Hello and welcome to this lesson. My name is Blake Jacobs and I'm an educator at Mozo Cyber Security Institutes. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about performing a TCP port scan using Nmap and also performing a UDP port scan with Nmap. Now, the following specifications and actions for this to be a successful pa a pass is with the TCP port scan, these are basically two lessons in one big video. So this is an introduction to Nmap. So with this one, we need to start um, a Linux virtual machine. Then we need to start an Apache service, Apache 2 service, start the SSH service, and then we're going to perform a few TCP, um, a, a few TCP port scans. With various things, we need to be able to perform a service detection. We need to perform an OS detection and uh, scan for all TCP ports using dash P dash. And the UDP port, um, Exercise will be basically the same, except we're going to be using SNMP on virtual uh, Linux virtual machine, and we're going to perform uh, a UDP scan using uh, dash SU. And I will tell you a little trick about the flags in a minute. Um, we're going to perform a service detection and a ports on all ports, a port scan on all ports. So let's have a look at that agenda. So the things we're going to be covering is who uses Nmap and for what reasons. We're going to be covering what is network enumeration and we're going to be explaining the differences between TCP and UDP ports and we're going to give you an example. We're going to be talking about common vulnerable ports to look for and a technical demonstration at the very end. So who uses Nmap and for what reasons? Well, many people in the in information security field and just IT in general use Nmap to perform various types of scans on local networks and even external networks. Some of these may be the following reasons. So we may want to just debug the network um, or, do, or do debug network issues. Um, for example, if you've got an SSH server and it's down, so we, we, we cannot SSH into it. Um, what we can sometimes do is Nmap um, and see if that port's opened. And if that port's opened, then we know that it's still working and might be something different. Um, we can also check to see if the port is being filtered, meaning it's being blocked. To, um, it's like locked down, so no one can, you know, even like SSH into it. So you may want to test out the web application firewall or the firewall behind the, you know, in the internal network to see if the, the port is being filtered. That's another reason why we want to scan networks as with Nmap is for some of those two uh, reasons. Um, we may want to just check for common vulnerabilities and exposures. Um, Nmap, Nmap comes with a scripting engine and it has a lot of predefined scripts, a lot of scripts already designed for scanning local networks and computers. You might scan a whole subnet, a whole network with the CIDR uh, with you know 192.168. Dot zero, dot zero, and then a slash 24, slash 8, depending on how many IPs you want to scan for. And we can use a, a, the scripting engine to detect vulnerabilities with Nmap. So we could scan a whole network, whole list of IPs for common vulnerabilities, and that's really powerful for a penetration test. We may also want to just do a banner grab um, to see what um, versions the services are running. So we might find a um, an outdated SSH server, um, an outdated SSH service. And we may want to then check for a vulnerability on exploit database and then execute the exploit and see if we get a shell. A really useful thing with Nmap is we can scan the operating system and figure out what operating system they're running, like Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and many others. It also does services enumeration, so it will tell you the service type. So, for example, it might say, um, Port 22 is open and it's running OpenSSH with this version and the operating system is running, the network is running this operating system, or the local computer is running this operating system. What is network enumeration? Now network enumeration is where you're mapping out the network to see what information we know about the certain, certain hosts such as open ports um, like port 80 which is a web server, port 443 which is HTTPS or 445 or 22. You may want to look to see what services are running like SSH, MySQL and FTP. Look to see what versions the services are running or even just look to see what operating systems 
the computers are running. You may want to look to see if the operating systems have any vulnerabilities. Um, for example, you know, we might have kernel, Linux kernel, which is 2.2 say, they might have a privilege escalation exploit where we can escalate our privileges to root. Um, with Nmap, we are able to gather lots of information about a network to play an attack. Um, it, it, it can collect lots of information about the infrastructure. Let's have a look at the differences between TCP ports and UDP ports. So TCP and UDP are a type of network protocol. They both um, communicate differently. And just, just for your information, uh, the port range is zero between 0 to 65535. That's all the ports in the hole. These are all the possible ports that you can scan for. Uh, TCP um, stands for Transmission Control Protocol. It is very reliable on the network, and the packets are generally transmitted directly to the host. Uh, but it is much, much slower than UDP. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. Uh, it is generally very unreliable, and the packets may drop, um, and UDP generally transmits in bursts. And here's a picture below, um, just underneath there, on how it works and how the connection is established. Uh, worth studying that as well. Um, Another thing is UDP, for an example, is streaming like Netflix. So you may want to, uh, you may find that UDP on um, Netflix is streaming on a particular port. Um, you can do that by typing in Netstat. Netstat will tell you what ports are established. Um, and yes, streaming is UDP and TCP is like, you know, SSH, um, you know, web services, uh, web servers, um, things like that. Let's have a look at a few more UDP ports together. So if you go to UDP ports, it will tell you a list of, list, this Wikipedia tells you a list of TCP and UDP ports. Um, and, and it tells you what they are. So let's have a look. So for example, here they are. So uh, echo protocol is UDP and TCP. Uh, disk discard, um, active users, it's really useful. So let's have a look at you know, Gopher, for example. Gopher is a protocol that is used in web application pen testing um, to you know, escalate SSRF, uh, and that uses TCP. Um, but I think you can use UDP as well. Assign means port number is assigned by um, an I, and, a I, A, and A for protocol use. Let's have a look at a UDP. Um, let's have a look at a UDP one. So here, here's a here's something. So NetBIOS is UDP. Uh, Internet Message Access Protocol is TCP. Uh, what else is there? Let's look for a very common one that we may may have heard of. Let's have a look at um, again. R login is a type of Linux uh, remote desktop, which is uh, TCP. And this is really useful to like look at um, all the different um, services and what ports they run and if they're UDP or TCP. Uh, let's have a look at, so here we go, a VPN daemon. A VPN daemon can be used for both TCP and UDP. So this is very useful, to, um, a web, very useful website to actually look at which have UDP and which have TCP. Adobe Flash is TCP. Um, what's another one? Let's have a look at, um, so FTP uh, may be UDP or TCP. So FTP can be both too. Most of them, um, so TCP is a lot of ports. As you can see, there was a lot of TCP ports, but there is less UDP. Let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. So let's have, talk about common vulnerable ports. Now when you look for vulnerable ports, it is highly dependent on what the infrastructure is and what company you're testing. But overall, generally the ports that are very useful to test for are 80, 443, 3389, 3306, 9200, 2375, 10250, 8080 and 80. Now what these are is 80 is a web server, uh, 443 is SSL or HTTPS, uh, 3389 is remote desktop protocol, meaning, you know, remotely access the machines and whatnot, very useful for um, admins and um, uh, technicians. Uh, 3306 is MySQL, 
which is a, a, a database management system. Um, 9200 is Elasticsearch, another type of um, database. Um, 2375, which is a Docker instance. Um, and two, 10250 is Kubernetes. And 8080 or 80 is generally what Jenkins, uh, what port Jenkins runs on. So let's have a look at a technical demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to connect to the box now, my VPS. I'll ask for my password, so I'll just type that in there. Awesome, so I'm connected to um, my virtual, uh, virtual private server. And what we want to do is we just um, want to do a, a quick Nmap scan. Now, what I'm going to be doing in this example is we're just going to perform a very basic one. Um, and we're going to perform it on, um, say, example.com, which is a, um, an, a web server, which is just on the network, on the web, sorry, that uh, it's, just, it's just an example domain. So we're going to perform it on that. So what we can do is we can type in nmap, just a very, very basic command. We can just type in nmap and then just type in the domain without the HTTP and all that. And what that will do is just a very basic nmap with all the default uh, arguments and it will tell us what ports are actually opened and information about the host too. Um, it's just going to take a bit of time. It also tells you the percentage as well as when it's like how how fast it's scanning and when it's going to finish. As you can see, it's got a basic web server, port 80, because it is uh, has got a web server. Also has T HTTPS open, 443, and it also has these other TCP ports as well. Um, we can use other arguments. Like the trick is with these arguments is the, the last the last letter of the argument is a capital, but they usually explain what it is. So for example, dash S and a capital V is versions. Uh, dash S lowercase S and U is UDP. Um, T is TCP and O is operating system. So let's have a look at the operating system of this host. So they usually, the, uh, the last big letter usually contains what the action is going to be, do, be doing, pretty much. So as you can see, it's uh, it's running, um, it doesn't tell us actually. Um, but if you want to look at the, the, the help, um, you just type in dash H. Um, and it will give us the help of all the arguments. Oh, my bad, I made a command there because I didn't type in. This is my uh, VPS, it runs a little bit slow. Um, so yeah, dash H will give us all the help. U is a UDP scan. Um, then you've got like these different types of scan, like S, F is a fin scan, X is an XM scan. So these are different types of scans. Some of these scans, some of these types may bypass um, firewall rules. So we might be able to um, get unfiltered ports or filtered ports, which we're not supposed to. Um, port specification, you can actually specify uh, a port and it even tells you how to, sp how to do certain things like scan all the ports. Um, these are, this is really useful to have a look at. Dash H will give you all the help, but let's perform just quickly um, an OS detection scan. Um, so let's do just dash O and we'll do dash S and we'll do... Uh, TCP scan. Let's have a look at this. This should detect um, the operating system and perform a TCP scan. Uh, we're not going to do UTP. That will be totally up to you. I'm um, not going to give you the answer. So let's have a look at the results of the scan. So let's have a look to see how long it's got to go. Shouldn't have long. <clears throat> Let me just sit back and watch your scan. As you can see, uh, it's finished uh, and it's running Linux, which is a 91% guess. So a 91% guess for 3.2. So it's running Linux 3.1 or 3.2, either one of those. Uh, it even tells you a bit about um, some in uh, some of the like stuff it's running. So it's running a network camera um, and it's got a router. It tells you the router too. So that is very useful information. Nmap is very, very powerful and very useful for penetration tests or even just information secure information uh, IT in general, it's very useful. So I would just like to say thanks for watching this video. I hope you've learned so much. And I would also like to say a big thank you for being a big part of the community. And until next time, see you in the next video. Happy hacking.